Akaba. Akaba English, also U.S., Arabic, LQB at Romanized, Al Akaba, Al Agaba, pronounced Al Akaba, Al Agaba, is the only coastal city in Jordan and the largest and most populous city on the Gulf of Akaba. Situated in southernmost Jordan, Akaba is the administrative center of the Akaba Governorate. The city had a population of 148,000. 398 in 2015, and a land area of 375 square kilometers, 144.8 sq mi. Today, Akaba plays a major role in the development of the Jordanian economy through the vibrant trade and tourism sectors. The port of Akaba also serves other countries in the region. Akaba's strategic location at the northeastern tip of the Red Sea between the continents of Asia and Africa has made its port important over the course of thousands of years. The ancient city was called Alath, adopted in Latin as Ayla and in Arabic as Isla. Its strategic location and proximity to copper mines made it a regional hub for copper production and trade in the Chalcolithic period. Ayla became a bishopric under Byzantine rule and later became a Latin Catholic titular see after Islamic conquest around AD 650. When it became known as Isla, the name Aqaba is late medieval. The Great Arab Revolt's Battle of Aqaba, depicted in the film Lawrence of Arabia, resulted in victory for Arab forces over the Ottoman defenders. Aqaba's location next to Wadi Rum and Petra has placed it in Jordan's Golden Triangle of Tourism, which strengthened the city's location on the world map and made it one of the major tourist attractions in Jordan. The city is administered by the Aqaba Special Economic Zone Authority, which has turned Aqaba into a low-tax, duty-free city, attracting several mega-projects like Isla Oasis, Saria Aqaba, Marsa Zaid and expansion of the port of Aqaba. They are expected to turn the city into a major tourism hub in the region. However, industrial and commercial activities remain important due to the strategic location of the city as the country's only seaport. The city sits right across the border from Eilat, likewise Israel's only port on the Red Sea. After the 1994 Israel-Jordan peace treaty, there were plans and hopes of establishing a trans-border tourism and economic area, but few of those plans have come to fruition. Name The name of the city was anciently Elath, Elath. The name is presumably derived from the Semitic name of a tree in the genus Pistaceae. Modern Eilat established 1947, situated about 5 km northwest of Aqaba, also takes its name from the ancient settlement. In the Hellenistic period, it was renamed Burenis in Greek Berenike, but the original name survived, and under Roman rule was reintroduced in the forms Ayla, Ayla or Hela, adopted in Byzantine Greek as Ayla Ayla, and in Arabic as Isla Isle. The Crusaders called the city Ellen. The present name Al Aqaba El Qubi and is a shortened from Aqabat Isla Qubi at Isle at the Mountain Pass of Isla, first mentioned in the 12th century by Idrisi, at a time when the settlement had been mostly reduced to a military stronghold. Properly referring to the pass just to the northeast of the settlement 29.559 dig and 35.95 dig, e slash 29.559 35.95. Now traversed by Aqaba Highway. History Nearby Chalcolithic Sites Excavations at two Tell's archaeological mounds, Tall Hujayret al Guzlan and Tall al Magas, both a few kilometers north of modern day Aqaba city, revealed inhabited settlements from c. 4000 BC during the Chalcolithic period, with thriving copper production on a large scale. This period is largely unknown due to the absence of written historical sources. University of Jordan archaeologists have discovered the sites where they found a small building whose walls were inscribed with human and animal drawings, suggesting that the building was used as a religious site. The people who inhabited the site had developed an extensive water system in irrigating their crops, which were mostly made up of grapes, olives, and wheat. Several different sized clay pots were also found suggesting that copper production was a major industry in the region. 
the pots being used in melting the copper and reshaping it. Scientific studies performed on site revealed that it had undergone two earthquakes, with the latter one leaving the site completely destroyed. Early History Alath The Edomites, who ruled over Edom just south of the Dead Sea, are believed to have built the first port in Aqaba called Alath around 1500 BC, turning it into a major hub for the trade of copper as the Phoenicians helped them develop their maritime economy. They profited from its strategic location at the junction of trading routes between Asia and Africa. Tell el Khalife. Archaeologists have investigated an Iron Age settlement at Tell el Khalife, immediately west of Aqaba, inhabited between the 8th and 4th centuries BCE. Undefined. Around 735 BC, the city was conquered by the Assyrian Empire. Because of the wars the Assyrians were fighting in the east, their trading routes were diverted to the city, and the port witnessed relative prosperity. The Babylonians conquered it in 600 BC. During this time, Elath witnessed great economic growth, which is attributed to the business background of its rulers who realized how important the city's location was. The Persian Achaemenid Empire took the city in 539 BC. Classical Antiquity Hellenistic period. The city continued to grow and prosper, which made it a major trading hub by the time of the Greek rule. By 300 BC, after the wars of Alexander the Great, it was described by a Greek historian to be one of the most important trading cities in the Arab world. The Ptolemaic Greeks called it Buranus. The Nebatian kingdom had its capital north of the city, at Petra. Roman period. In 64 BC, following the Roman conquest, they annexed the city and called it Ela, also Hela, Elana, in Greek rendered Ela Ela. Both Petra and Ela were under strong Nebatian influence despite the Roman rule. Ela reached its peak during Roman times. The great long distance road, the Via Traiana Nova, led south from Bostra through Amman, terminating in Ela, where it connected with a west road leading to the Paralia and Roman Egypt. Around AD 106 Aelo was one of the main ports for the Romans. Late Roman and Byzantine periods The Aqaba church was constructed under Roman rule between 293 and 303 and is considered to be the oldest known purpose-built Christian church in the world. By the time of Eusebius, Aelo became the garrison of the Legio Expretensis, which was moved to Ela from Jerusalem. One of the oldest known texts written in the Arabic alphabet is a late 4th century inscription found in Javel Rem 50 kilometers 31 miles east of Aqaba. The city became a Christian bishopric at an early stage. Its bishop Peter was present at the First Council of Nicaea, the first ecumenical council, in 325. Verlis was at the Council of Chalcedon in 451, and Paul at the Synod called by Patriarch Peter of Jerusalem in 536 against Patriarch Anthemus, I of Alexandria, a council attended by bishops of the late Roman provinces of Palestina Prima, Palestina Secunda, and Palestina Tertia, to the last named of which a citadel was also built in the area that became the focal point of the Roman southern defense system. In the 6th century, Procopius of Caesarea mentioned a Jewish population in Eilat and its surroundings, which enjoyed autonomy until the time of Justinian I.R. 527-565. According to Ibn Ishaq, Mohammed himself reached Ayla during the expedition of Tabuk of 630 and extracted tribute from the city. During the late Byzantine or even early Muslim period, Ayla was the origin of what came to be known as the Isla Aksum Amphoras. Early Muslim Period Ayla fell to the Islamic armies by 650, and the ancient settlement was left to decay, while a new Arab city was established outside its walls under Uthman ibn Affan, known as Isla Arabic, Isle. The early Muslim city was excavated in 1986 by a team from the University of Chicago. Artifacts are now on exhibit at Aqaba Archaeological Museum and Jordan Archaeological Museum in Amman.
the fortified city was inscribed in a rectangle of 170 x 145 meters, with walls 2.6 meters thick and 4.5 meters high, surrounding a fortified structure, occupying an area of 35 x 55 meters. Twenty-four towers defended the city. The city had four gates on all four sides, defining two main lines intersecting at the center. The intersection of these two thoroughfares was indicated by a tetrapylon, a four-way arch which was later transformed into a luxury residential building decorated with frescoes dated to the 10th century. This type of urban structure, called Amsur, is typical of early Islamic fortified settlements. The city prospered from 661 to 750 under the Umayyads and beyond under the Abbasids, 750-970, and the Fatimids 970-1116. Allah took advantage of its key position as an important step on the road to India and Arab spices frankincense, myrrh, between the Mediterranean Sea and the Arabian Peninsula. The city is also mentioned in several stories of the Arabian Nights. The geographer Shams Eddin Mukadasi describes Isla as near by the ruined ancient city. The city was mentioned in medieval Arabic sources as having a mixed population of Jews and Christians. It subsequently became an important station for pilgrim caravans on the way to Mecca. Crusader slash Ayyubid and Mamluk periods Baldwin I of Jerusalem took over the city in 1115 without encountering much resistance. The center of the city then moved to 500 meters along the coast to the south, and the crusader fortress of Elin was built, which allowed the kingdom of Jerusalem to dominate all roads between Damascus, Egypt, and Arabia, protecting the crusader states from the east and allowing for profitable raids on trade caravans passing through the area. In order to secure this strategic position, Baldwin also buit and garrisoned a fortress on Pharaoh's island called Isle de Grey by the Franks, the modern Jazirat Faran in Egyptian territorial waters about seven kilometers, four miles west of Aqaba. The garrison of Ellen, now serving primarily as a military outpost, was further strengthened in 1142 by Pagan the Butler, Lord of Altrigerdane, who pursued an ambitious program of castle building throughout his domain. However, there was no large scale settlement of Europeans in the area and the region between the Dead Sea and the Gulf of Aqaba remained mainly inhabited by Bedouins, who were obliged to pay tribute to the lordship of al -Tridurdain. Despite all efforts to fortify the region, the city was captured in 1170 by a squadron sent by Saladin as he was besieging Gaza, while it was successfully raided by Reynald of Chatelain in 1182. It was never retaken by the Crusaders. The old fort was rebuilt, as Aqaba Fortress, by Mamluk Sultan al-Ashraf Kansa al-Ghuri in the early 16th century. For the next four centuries, the site was a simple fishing village of little importance. Modern History During World War I, the Ottoman forces were forced to withdraw from Aqaba in 1917, after the Battle of Aqaba, led by T. E. Lawrence, and the Arab forces of Adi Abu Tay and Sheriff Nasir. The capture of Aqaba allowed the British to supply the Arab forces. In 1918, the regions of Aqaba and Man were officially incorporated into the Kingdom of the Hejaz. In 1925, Ibn Saud, the ruler of Nejd, with the help of his Wahhabi Ikhwan troops, successfully annexed the Hejaz, but gave up the Man and Aqaba to the British Protectorate of Transjordan. In 1965, King Hussein, through an exchange deal with Saudi Arabia, gave 6,000 square kilometers, 2317 square miles of desert land in Jordanian territories, in exchange for other territories, including 12 kilometers, 7 miles of an extension of prime coastline south of Aqaba, which included the magnificent. Aqaba was a major site for imports of Iraqi goods in the 1980s until the Persian Gulf War. Geography, geography, geography. The city lies at Jordan's southernmost point, on the Gulf of Aqaba lying at the tip of the Red Sea. Its strategic location is shown in the fact that it is located at the crossroads of the continents of Asia and Africa, 
while bordering Israel, Egypt, and Saudi Arabia. Climate Aqaba has a hot desert climate, Koppen climate classification BWH, with warm winters and hot dry summers. Subzero temperatures can be observed every few years. It is deadly for tropical plants such as coconut trees. The record low temperature of 3.9 deg C, 25.0 deg F, was on January 16, 2008, as in Islet. Local government. In August 2000, the Aqaba Special Economic Zone Authority, ASIZIL, was established, which acted as the statutory institution empowered with administrative, fiscal, regulatory, and economic responsibilities. Administrative divisions. Jordan is divided into 12 administrative divisions, each called a governorate. Aqaba Governorate divides into three districts, some of which are divided into subdistricts and further divided into villages. Economy Benefiting from its location and status as Jordan's special economic zone, Aqaba's economy is based on the tourism and port industry sectors. The economic growth in Aqaba is higher than the average economic growth in the country. Under the special economic zone status, some investments and trades are exempted from taxation. As a result, new resorts, housing developments, and retail outlets are being constructed. New projects such as Tala Bay and Saria al Aqaba are constructed, aiming at providing high end vacation and residential homes to locals and foreigners alike. Aqaba's location next to Wadi Rum and Petra has placed it in Jordan's Golden Triangle of Tourism, which strengthened the city's location on the world map and made it one of the major tourist attractions in Jordan. The city is administered by the Aqaba Special Economic Zone Authority, which has turned Aqaba into a low-tax, duty-free city, attracting several mega-projects like Isla Oasis, Saria Aqaba, Marsa Zaid, and expansion of the Port of Aqaba. They are expected to turn the city into a major tourism hub in the region. However, industrial and commercial activities remain important due to the strategic location of the city as the country's only seaport. Over U.S. $20 billion have been invested in Aqaba since 2001 when the Special Economic Zone was established. Along with tourism projects, Aqaba has also attracted global logistic companies such as APM Terminals and Agility to invest in logistics, which boosted the city's status as a transport and logistics hub. There are numerous hotels that reside in Aqaba, but new hotels are also under construction. Aqaba is the only seaport of Jordan, so virtually all of Jordan's exports depart from here. Heavy machinery industry is also flourishing in the city with regional assembly plants being located in Aqaba, such as the Land Rover Aqaba Assembly Plant. By 2008, the ASSES had attracted $18 spin in committed investments, meeting its $6 spin target by 2020 by a third and more in less than a decade. The goal was adjusted to bring in another $12 spin by 2020, but in 2009 alone, deals worth $14 spin were inked. Some projects currently under construction are Marsa Zeta $10 billion is the largest mega-mixed-use development project ever envisioned in both Jordan and the region. Marsa Zaid will host facilities including residential neighborhoods, commercial outlets and amenities, entertainment venues, financial and business facilities, and a number of hotels. Additionally, the property will feature marinas and a cruise ship terminal. Marsa Zaid will encompass 6.4 million square meters of built-up property. Saria Aqaba, a $1.05 billion resort with a man-made lagoon, luxury hotels, villas, and townhouses that will be completed by 2017. Isla Oasis, a $1.05 billion resort around a man-made lagoon with hotels, villas, and 18-hole golf course designed by Greg Norman. It also has an Arabian Venice theme with apartment buildings built along canals only accessible by walkway or boat. This project will be completed by 2017. Tala Bay. Tala Bay was developed in a distinctive architectural style that blends Jordanian and regional architecture with total cost of U.S. $680 million. Another distinguishing feature of this single community resort 
is its two-kilometer private sandy beach on the Red Sea. The Red Sea Astrarium TRSA, the world's only Star Trek-themed park, worth $1.05 billion, would have been completed by 2014, but cancelled in 2015. Port Relocation Aqaba's current port will be relocated to the southernmost part of the province, near the Saudi border. Its capacity will surpass that of the current port. The project costs $5 billion, and it will be completed by 2013. Aqaba will be connected by the National Rail System, which will be completed by 2013. The rail project will connect Aqaba with all Jordan's main cities and economic centers and several countries like Saudi Arabia, Iraq, and Syria. The Aqaba Container Terminal ACT handled a record 587,000. 530 20-foot equivalent units TU in 2008, an increase of 41.6% on the previous year. To accommodate the rise in trade on the back of the increasing popularity of container shipping and the stabilizing political situation in Iraq, the Aqaba Development Corporation ADC has announced plans for a new port. The port relocation 20 kilometers 12 miles to the south will cost an estimated $600 sum and will improve infrastructure, while freeing up space for development in the city. Plans for upgrading the King Hussein International Airport Kaya and the development of a logistics center will also help position Aqaba as a regional hub for trade and transport. Tourism Aqaba has a number of luxury hotels, including in the Talabay Resort, 20 km further to the south, which service those who come for fun on the beaches as well as scuba diving. It also offers activities which take advantage of its desert location. Its many coffee shops offer mansaf and naif, and baklava desserts. Another very popular venue is the Turkish Bath Hammam built in 306 AD, in which locals and visitors alike come to relax after a hot day. In 2006, the Tourism Division of the Aqaba Special Economic Zone Authority Assessor reported that the number of tourists visiting the zone in 2006 rose to about 432,000, an increase of 5% over previous year. Approximately 65%, or 293,000, were Jordanians. Of foreign tourists, Europeans visited the zone in the largest numbers, with about 98,000 visiting during the year. The division has financed tourism advertising and media campaigns with the assistance of the European Union. During national holidays, Jordanians from the north, particularly Amman and Urbid, flocked to Aqaba's luxury resorts and sandy beaches. During these holiday weekends, hotel occupancy reaches 100%. Aqaba has been chosen for the site of a new waterfront building project that would rebuild Aqaba with new man-made water structures, new high-rise residential and office buildings, and more tourist services to place Aqaba on the investment map and challenge other centers of waterfront development throughout the region. Aqaba was chosen as the Arab Tourism City of 2011. During the five-day holiday at both the end of Ramadan and Eid al-Adha, Jordanian and Western expats flock into the city with numbers reaching up to 50,000 visitors. During this time, the occupancy rate of most hotels there reaches as high as 90% and are often fully booked. It is to be noted that the several development projects, i.e. Isla, Saria, etc., now taking place in Aqaba provide opportunities of empowerment for local populations that want to expand their agency within the city. According to Fulbright scholar Kimberly Cavanaugh, development projects will help exhibit the ways global local partnerships and the resultant cultural exchanges can result in mutually beneficial outcomes. Demographics The city of Aqaba has one of the highest population growth rates in Jordan in 2011, and only 44% of the buildings in the city had been built before 1990. A special census for Aqaba City was carried by the Jordanian Department of Statistics in 2007. The total population of Aqaba by the census of 2007 was 98,400. The 2011 population estimate is 136,200. The results of the census compared to the national level are indicated as follows. Religion 
I Islam represents the majority of the population of Aqaba, but Christianity still exists today. Approximately 5,000 Christian families live in the city. There are several churches in the city and multiple Christian schools, including Rossary Sisters School Aqaba. Cityscape Residential buildings in Aqaba are made up of four stories, of which are covered with sandstone or limestone. The city has no high rises, however. Mars's aid project is planned to dramatically change that reality through the construction of several high rise towers that host hotels, residential units, offices, and clinics. Culture Museums The largest museum in Aqaba is the Aqaba Archaeological Museum. Lifestyle Aqaba has recently experienced a great growth in its nightlife, especially during the dramatic increase of tourist number in the 2000s. Cuisine The fact that the city is the only coastal city in Jordan has created a distinctive cuisine relative to other Jordanian cities. Main dishes include sayadia, a combination of rice, fish and spices, a dish common among Arab coastal cities. Kishnes fish, tomatoes and onions cooked together. Fakari is made up of rice, meat, hummus, beans, ghee and spices popular with wedding ceremonies. Akabali desserts include alhu, which consists of layers of pastry stuffed with nuts or dates that are then fried in ghee and dipped in sugar syrup. Dates and ghee consisting of fresh dates dipped in ghee, is a simple dessert also commonly presented to guests. Transport Rail Wool The Aqaba railway system is only used for cargo transportation and no longer functions for travelers, with the exception of the route to Wadi Rum. If and when an Israeli railway to Ayalat is built, it might either be extended across the border to Jordan or enable passengers traveling from Gushdan to Aqaba to cross the border via road transport. Airports King Hussein International Airport is the only civilian airport outside of Amman in the country. It is a 20 minutes drive away from the city center. Regular flights are scheduled from Amman to Aqaba with an average flying time of 45 minutes, which is serviced by Royal Jordanian Airlines and Jordan Aviation Airlines. Several international airlines connect the city to Istanbul, Dubai, Alexandria, Sharm El Sheikh, and other destinations in Asia and Europe. Since the 1994 peace treaty between Israel and Jordan, there were plans to jointly develop airport infrastructure in the region. However, when Israel built Raman Airport some 30 km 20 mi to the northwest of Aqaba, this happened without consulting the Jordanian side, which caused a slight deterioration of bilateral relations between the two countries. The two airports are only 12 km 7 mi away from one another by great circle distance. Roads Aqaba is connected by an 8,000 km 5,000 mi modern highway system to surrounding countries. The city is connected to the rest of Jordan by the Desert Highway and the King's Highway that provides access to the resorts and settlements on the Dead Sea. Aqaba is connected to Eilat in Israel by taxi and bus services passing through the Wadi Araba crossing, and to Hakel in Saudi Arabia by the Dura border crossing. There are many bus services between Aqaba and Amman and the other major cities in Jordan. Jet and Trust International are the most common lines. These tourist buses are spacious and installed with air conditioning and bathrooms. Port The port of Aqaba is the only port in Jordan. Regular ferry routes to Taba are available on a daily basis and are operated by several companies such as Sinbad for marine transportation and Arab Bridge Maritime. The routes serve mainly the Egyptian coastal cities on the Gulf like Taba and Sharm El Sheikh. In 2006, the port was ranked as being the best container terminal in the Middle East by Lloyd's List. The port was chosen due to it being a transit cargo for other neighboring countries, its location between four countries and three continents being an exclusive gateway for the local market and for the improvements it has recently witnessed. Wildlife, wildlife. Aqaba's Gulf is rich with marine life, 
around 500 species of fish inhabit the Gulf, many of which are residents, like lionfish and octopus, while others are migratory, appearing mostly during the summer, such as the world's fastest fish, the sailfish, as well as the world's largest fish, the whale shark. Marine mammals and reptiles also inhabit the Gulf during summer. Hawksbill sea turtles and bottlenosed dolphins call Akaba's Gulf home as well. A large number of predatory shark species used to inhabit Akaba's Gulf due to overfishing and pollution. The shark population in Akaba is in a decline, which are mostly deep water sharks such as tiger sharks, thresher sharks, and a small number of reef sharks. The short fin mako shark is the most common shark caught by fishermen in Akaba, which is also the world's fastest shark, whereas whale sharks have the most common sightings, locally known as batten. Conservationists are working hard to protect Akaba's shark population. Divers commonly stumble upon yellow-mouthed moray eels, blue-spotted stingrays, eagle rays, napoleon wrasse, frogfish groupers, barracuda clownfish, and many other colorful and exotic species. The Gulf of Akaba hosts more than 390 bird species, including migratory birds such as the greater flamingo, great white pelican, and the pink-backed pelican. Education The universities and institutes in Akaba Twin towns, sister cities Akaba is twinned with Gallery